President Donald Trump said he expects U.S. troop numbers in Afghanistan to be under 5,000 by Election Day in November and called America's involvement in the Middle East, quote, the single biggest mistake in the history of our country in an interview with Axios released Monday night in August. Um, U.S. military forces have already dropped by more than 3,000 personnel this year, bringing the American military footprint to about uh, 8,500 troops around the same level as when Trump took office in 2017. When okay, press so wait, wait, let's hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so he brought some 3,000 home, and it went that means that it went down to 8,500 troops around the same level of when he took office. So that means that these 3,000, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Okay, let's pay attention here. Do that the math. That, that means the 3,000 that he brought back were the 3,000 that he already increased and then he brought back, right? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that what it's, what this sounds like to you or am I misreading this? Um, no, that's math. Yeah, that's math. Okay, so... <laughs> Here's the thing, the, the, what I, what I, okay, so I'm, right now I'm trying to figure this out with you guys because I have been following what's been happening and maybe I've been following it wrong, but every time people say like, oh, he's bringing the troops back, my, what I remember, but based on following the news, I was like, yeah, he's bringing the troops back that he sent. Yeah. Right. The, what, the, okay. So I'm like, am I missing something here? People are like, yay, Trump is bringing back the troops. Like, yeah, he increased it and now he's bringing it back. I'm not sure like what's happened. Like what? So 80, he's basically got to 8,500 troops, which was exactly the same level at the time that he took office. So where, where are all the troops that he was supposed to reduce? Where are all the people that he was supposed to bring back? It was supposed to be below 8,500, not exactly the same number as when he took office. So it's been four goddamn years. It's been four years. Four years. Like he, his number one thing that people loved about him, one of the, actually one of the things is uh, when he was debating Hillary Clinton, uh, like, yeah, I'm going to bring the troops home. I'm going to bring the troops home. Like, yes, finally. And even the people who hated him were like, okay, I guess that's a good thing. A lot of people that hated him were like, I guess that's a good thing. I guess that's a good thing. It's been four years. And you're still at the same level at the, at when he took office. Where are all the people that keep telling me that he's... Oh, okay. Anyways. This is what the comment section was saying in the last video we did on Trump, right? Oh, boy. Okay. Right. Um, no, wait. Okay, yeah, the train yeah. passed. Um, when pressed if that force level represented a real change in strategy in the region where U.S. forces have been deployed for nearly 19 years, the majority of my life, <laughs> Trump said that he expected the troop levels to drop by half, quote, very soon. Quote, very we, are, soon. we are going down to 4,000. We're negotiating that right now, Trump said. I don't want to tell you when, but I've always said we will lar we will get largely out okay let me tell you something okay this is this whole very soon thing it's been four years since he took office and it hasn't been going down okay and this whole we're negotiating that right now negotiating with who this is one of the very few things in, as a president that you don't have to negotiate with anybody okay like as a president you're the commander-in-chief nobody can say no to you on this this is not like one of those things that you have to go through the Senate or through the Congress. This is you. You are the commander in chief, the Pentagon. Nobody can say no to you on this. If you decide tomorrow that we're going to end this, this and that war, you're the final, you're the final authority in the United States. You know, there's not that many things that, you know, that the president is like, doesn't have to negotiate. This is one of those things. This is one of those very few things that the president doesn't have to negotiate with anyone. That's why it's called the commander in chief. Okay, you're, who are you negotiating with? Nobody, you, you, you're the per person that people have to beg to like increase or reduce his numbers. You're the final say on this. You could, you could tomorrow, four years ago, you could have done this. Okay.
Continue. Um, when asked what levels would be on election day in November, Trump said he expected to put between 4,000 and 5,000 troops there. Hmm. That's next week. <laughs> <laughs> About, yeah, coming, coming up real quick. Um, military leaders and numerous members of Congress have cautioned against too quick of a withdrawal from the region, saying it could destabilize Afghan security forces currently receiving support and logistical help from U.S. security members. Last month, House lawmakers in a bipartisan vote approved limits on the administration's power to reduce the U.S. troops numbers in Afghanistan below 8,000 without, without meeting clear security benchmarks first. That measure must be must still must be approved by the Senate. This is all bull crap. He could have done this. So okay, hold on. Let me see. Uh, Qasim saying does uh, turn mentioned when he will bring the troops back. Uh, Trump. Okay, that's for Trump. If not, he is not a lawyer a liar yet. Um, well, I mean, I guess he doesn't have to mention it, and that's why he gets to never bring them back because he never said when he's going to bring them back. Okay, and now he's just going to yeah. Uh, ghost funny. I mean, he had four years. He could have done this a lot easier uh, earlier. Come on, guys. He doesn't have a plan to get the troops out. He has less than a week left. Guys, even when he says like, "Oh, I'm gonna do this immediately. I'm gonna do this next week," everything he has said, like, I mean, it's the same thing with his wall, right? Maybe his dog should. I don't know. Commander in chief. Luke is here. He's negotiating with the <laughs> ghost funny saying he's negotiating with the voices in his head um by the way again i'm just saying this whole senate and house lawmaker thing you know you know the president can go beyond around all of these people okay the only thing like the senate and the house can like um uh, they could like reduce budgets or uh, you know stop funding from this and that but again if when it comes to actually the deployment the pentagon listens has to listen to the president okay and by the way the uh, the Pentagon has done a very good job of doing whatever they want. And uh, because this president has been very, very weak when it comes to dealing with the Pentagon, right? Uh, the Pentagon just like ke keep like doing um, meetings with him. And they're like, this is why you can't do this. This is why you can't do that. And he's been intimidated by them. And he's like, oh, I have to listen to them. These are generals. And he doesn't understand that they have to listen to him. Like they keep coming and telling him like why they need to do this, why they can't do this. And he got, he feels like, okay, these people, he kind of, he, he, they have made him, they have kind of bullied him into thinking like, okay, these people have authority over me. Right. Um, and he even said that like, oh, these people come with these general costumes and I guess I have to listen to them. He like technically said that he doesn't understand that if he tells them that this is not how it's going to be. They have no choice but being like, okay, Mr. President, they have no choice. Right. But I think they have, you know, they have, they are, they have successfully intimidated him in a position that he just listens to them and he just agrees with what they say. I, yeah. He's been a very weak president when it comes to dealing with Pentagon. Um, okay, let's continue. Okay. Critics of the ongoing war have countered that the United States has remained in the region well past any useful missions hmm. and that Trump should not leave American troops there indefinitely. Trump has alternated between the two sides, repeatedly pledging to end U.S. involvement in the war, but also agreeing to military plus ups in the region during the course of his presidency. As many as 14,000 U.S. troops have been deployed to the region in recent years after former President Obama reduced, the the <laughs> reduced that force size to under 9,000 by the end of his term. Right. So the opposite of what he said he's going to do. So Obama reduced the size of the force and Trump increased it. Mm -hmm. All right. In the Axios interview, Trump brushed off assertions that he hasn't it's okay. You okay. continue. Doesn't done enough to end the war in Afghanistan, saying that his administration has been tougher on terrorist groups than any other. We took ISIS out of Syria, he said. Um, when I took over, it was totally rampant. ISIS was all over the place. We took them out. We captured them. We killed them. We have done. <laughs> I, I, we? I. 
No, 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 I'm just laughing at the way that Trump talks. Like, just that right. sentence, I can hear him saying it. We right. took him out. We captured him. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, continuing. I've done things that no other president has done. <laughs> That's not how he talks. We should have never been in the Middle East. To get into the Middle East was the single biggest mistake in the history of our country. Um, the mm. interview took place on July 22nd, but was released in full Monday night. Again, Monday night, referring to when this was published in August, early August. Last week, Axios made public parts of the interview uh, parts of the interview where Trump acknowledged that he had not pressed Russian President Vladimir Putin on intelligence reports that Russian officials had offered bounties on U.S. troops in Afghanistan, saying he did not find them credible. This was a scandal to me. I can't believe that this was not a bigger deal. <laughs> It should have been right. a huge deal because if true, that could qualify Russia as a state sponsor of terror. Right. Like, and Trump just, you're just not gonna, you're just gonna, you're just gonna like let that roll on by. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm, I still can't believe that people aren't talking about that as much as it, it shook me. I was like, what? Right. <laughs> um, Quote, we did not discuss the bounties issue, Trump said. It never reached my desk. What? Yeah. <laughs> because intelligence officials didn't think it was real. If it had reached my desk, I would have done something about it. Uh, um, that's the end so of this he, article. Yeah, so here's the thing. A lot of people might say, like, well, he had to increase the troops because of this and because of that, and the situation was different. Okay, for two responses to that. Well, first of all, there's any troop increase anywhere people are going to be able to give ex reasons for why they needed to do that, okay? So if you want to say, like, well, Trump couldn't bring the troops back and he had to increase it here because of this, this and that. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you could say the same thing about Obama, Clinton, or whoever, right? Their reasons are always going to be there. You're going to have excuses for anything, right? Um, secondly, even if you agree with, if you even if you think, like, well, he had a good reason why he had to, uh, increase the troops just then don't pretend that he reduced the troops don't say that oh he's gonna do this he's reduced the troops he's gonna end the wars be like well he didn't because he couldn't okay but who are all these people in my in our live chat that came like i mean we need to vote trump because he's gonna end the war he didn't all right excuses like you could come up with your excuses but he didn't okay he had all the opportunity and he could have he could have but they found reasons for him to stay there 